Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Thank you for joining me today. We will both rejoice and be glad in it. It's a privilege to come into your home once again. I am Femi Fenoyo, your host on this teaching channel. Last time we started looking at the second coming and we said that the testimony of the scripture is that the second coming stands on two legs. Okay, and this, this is very important for us to understand so that we will not be confused. There will be no confusion as we study the end time events but most importantly, it helps us to understand God's purposes in the end time. Because you, all, you need to understand that God is dealing with the church, is dealing with Israel, and is dealing with the world. And if we don't understand this, there will be a lot of confusion. Okay, so yes, it's one single event, one single event, but it's going to take place in two stages. It stands on two legs, takes place in two steps okay this end time event works on two legs okay and it's very important for us to understand that the first leg is commonly called rapture and i'm going to say it again that if you don't like the word rapture use the word apaxo use the english word cut up but we'll come and deal with that but i am going to reuse the word rapture in this teaching so and then the second leg of this one single event is also called the second coming and don't confuse it because both of them are also called the second coming and i've tried to explain that that yes sometimes um the part can also be at the name of the whole and we need to understand that so so the second coming has two legs we have rapture and we have the second coming and we've looked very briefly in the last teaching as to the difference between both of them these are not semantic differences it is important if you don't understand that, you will not understand end time event. You will confuse God's purposes and God's plan for the end time. Praise the Lord. Today, what we are going to do is to look at some three words, biblical words. We're talking vocabulary today. We want to look at three biblical words in the scripture that will throw light for us on what will be happening at the end time. Please join me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you're welcome back. So what we want to do today is to start. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to look at the three of them. We want to look at three Greek words that will help throw light on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are biblical words. Um, that will help us to understand what the Lord is doing in his second coming up. I'm not a Greek, neither am I the son of a Greek, but there are materials out there that will help us to um, understand some of these things. So if, you, if I'm not calling this word right, please pardon me. Um, but I'm going to put them on the screen over there so that you can see the spelling. And then we can study this together. So the first thing is that I'm going to give you the Greek name of these three words. And then we are going to look a little bit into their meaning, especially as they apply and throw light for us on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to give you the three of them and then we'll take them one by one. If we can't finish them in this teaching, we'll continue them by the grace of God, the next one. So here are the three words, and I'm going to be paying attention to my note here. So the first one is parousia, parousia. The second one is apocalypsis, apocalypsis. And the third one is epiphania, epiphania. So I'll go through that again, parousia, apocalypsis, and epiphania. So these are three common words that are used with respect to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, there are some words we are going to define later, for example, rapture, tribulation, and things like that. But these three words are very important for us to establish at the beginning so that we can then build on them. Now, before we go 
into each one of them let me first of all say that number one these words were not peculiar to christianity these words were in use in common secular use in sometimes also in some some of them even are used in the occultic um, um, group so you need to understand and i've mentioned this before you know we, we talk about the word mystery okay you you have to understand that sometimes occultic people use the word mystery but the bible uses them in a different way so you need to understand that oftentimes the bible god redeemed this word and infuses them with greater meaning with more expansive more powerful meaning so so you need to look at this word you need to look at what they mean in their normal setting secular setting and see how god used them in the scripture so that's the first thing i want us to establish that we're going to look some of them we're going to look how how they were used in their secular setting <clears throat> and see how the lord has applied that to the scripture number one the second thing i'm going to say is that this word are used for the both legs of the second coming now because i need to clarify this here because again this cause has caused some controversy because some people have argued that since god used used these terms for both the first leg and the second leg that that invariably means that both legs are the same that they are not really two steps or two legs to the second coming but one leg i think the first thing we will have to say to that is that the the the, the combined testimony of the scripture doesn't support that like i said in the first in in earlier teaching that when you read the scripture it is very clear from the scripture that the second coming will have to take place in two steps in two stages so i think the first answer to that is that the biblical evidence the evidence of the scripture is that this is going to happen in two totally different stages okay fine people argue about was the duration between those two stages we will come to that but you will have to say by scripture that the second coming happened in two stages but the other thing is that i think that argument is flawed the fact that god uses the same terms for both first and the second coming oh sorry not first and the second coming for both leg of the second coming the fact that god uses the same terminology for both of them does not mean that they are one now let me give you an example if you are a teacher okay you teach in a secondary school okay you you teach in a secular school and also you are a sunday school teacher and you teach in the sunday school in the church now because you 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 teach both in the church and in a secular school we call you teachers okay in other words there is something that connects what you do in church and what you do in your secular job you teach okay the fact that i use the word teaching for you that you are a teacher that you teach in church and in class that does not mean that what you do in church that church and school are the same no so you need to understand that this word they are characterizing what is taking place in those two events okay so the what brought them together is what that something is happening in these two events that is identical is a characterizing trait it's not bringing them together what we are saying is that this lady or this gentleman teaches in church and also teaches in secular class so in a sense there's something he or she is doing that is the same in both settings and that is what these three words bring out for us the lord is doing something in both the the first leg and the second leg in both the rapture and the second coming that are similar but like in 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 my example even though i am teaching in church and i am teaching in class but i'm teaching to different people 
and I am teaching different content. So you will have to understand what I do and how I do it and the implication of what I'm doing in the different setting. Even though I'm teaching in both settings, it has two different implications, two different content, two different applications. And that is exactly what we are saying here. So I, I think that argument is flawed. Okay, to say because um, the Bible uses the same word for the first leg, for rapture and for the second coming, to then say that that necessarily means they are the same. No, I think that is fraud. Okay, in fact, for me, it brings out the, the, the major truth that God is doing the same thing, but that the recipient, that the focus is different. And I think that is very important. In fact, for me, that throw light for us on the focus of this tool. Like, remember what I said in the last teaching. We need to understand that in the end time, God is dealing with the church, is dealing with Israel, and is dealing with the world. Too. So if we get it wrong, and people do get it wrong, if we get it wrong with respect to God's plan and purposes for the church, and for Israel and for the world, we are going to get it all confused with respect to the end time. For me, the end time is a tool for me understanding the church, understanding Israel, and understanding the world. Okay, the church is not Israel, Israel is not the church. Okay, I know there is a teaching out there where that people call replacement theology, where people feel that the church has taken over from Israel and God is done with Israel. I'm sorry, that is not biblical. You cannot prove that by the Bible, and I've mentioned this before. God has not forgotten Israel. God still has a plan and a purpose for Israel. God still has something to do with Israel. So you need to understand that. Don't get them all confused. So, so these words, these three words that we are going to be considering, parousia, apocalypsis, and epiphania, yes, they are words that are common in secular use in biblical days, but they are, God used them as he always does and apply them to this event that is going to happen in the end time. And number two, all the three of them are applied to both rapture and to the second coming. But they have different focus. They have different application. Praise the Lord. I know I've not gone into any one of them. We've just laid this foundation. I think I'm going to stop here. And the next teaching, by the grace of God, will begin to take each one of these words one by one. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. Bye.